Vernal keratoconjunctivitis is fairly commonly treated with topical steroids, dependence on which runs a risk of development of steroid-induced cataract, or glaucoma, or both. Our patient first presented to us with the latter and underwent a series of surgeries in both eyes. In the right eye, he underwent mitomycin C trabeculectomy twice, had cataract surgery, and eventually lost vision due to corneal decompensation after emmet glaucoma valve surgery done elsewhere. When he first presented to me, he was pseudophagic and intraocular pressure in the left eye was controlled on two anti-glaucoma medication. But soon his intraocular pressure went out of control and he underwent a mitomycin C trab initially. This failed fairly soon and he underwent an Orolab aqueous drainage implant in February 2015. The inferotemporal quadrant was chosen as conjunctiva was very fibrosed and adherent in the superotemporal quadrant. Tube was cut to 3 mm and inserted into the anterior chamber. However, within two months of surgery, the tube started retracting but continued to be well visualized on gonioscopy with good control of intraocular pressure. At six months post RD surgery, tube was not visible anymore and the IOP started rising. Anterior segment optical coherence tomography done at this stage showed a retracted tube which was blocked and adherent to the endothelium with localized opacity. In view of one-eyed status and the other eye being lost to corneal decompensation status post emma glaucoma valve, a decision to use a tube extender was taken. Tube extender is an accessory of the emma glaucoma valve system which has an external an internal diameter comparable to the Adi tube. It has small wings with a lumen to fit the original tube, two wings that can be fixed to the sclera and a tube that can be cut to size and placed in the AC or sulcus as desired. Our patient eventually had surgery five months after it was advised as he developed kidney stone and subsequent serious sequelae related to it. During tube extender surgery, the corneal patch graft was removed and the original Adi tube was withdrawn from the anterior chamber. Its length was further reduced to find a fit into the lumen of the tube extender posteriorly. Such that the wings could be comfortably fixed to the sclera between the plate and the limbus. This process did take some time, but eventually the union of the Adi plate with truncated tube and the lumen of the tube extender was achieved. Once the wings were fixed to the sclera with 9-0 nylon suture, via a separate track created adjacent to the previous one. The tube of the extender was trimmed to appropriate length and introduced into the anterior chamber. The length of this tube was kept a little longer in view of previous retraction. Corneal Pratchcraft was glued back in position and the conjunctiva sutured with 80 Vicro. Due to increased bulk under the patch graft, he developed a delin in the early post-op period, which was managed with intensive preservative-free lubricants. There was mild conjunctival retraction too, which settled down with oral doxycycline. The eye eventually stabilized 
at the preoperative vision of 2320 with an intraocular pressure of 12 mm mercury. Anterior segment OCT repeated in the postoperative period shows a patent lumen as seen here. Tube extender surgery in RD and the union of two unrelated tube systems appeared to be made in heaven as we achieved a perfect fit with control of postoperative intraocular pressure without medication.